Now, in a recent paper in 2002, uh, Noam Chomsky and Mark Hauser, biologists at Harvard University, Noam Chomsky is a linguist at MIT, uh, also uh, known for other writings, and Tecumseh Fitch, who's a, a biologist at uh, St. Andrews University in Scotland, proposed that the fundamental property of human language in the sense that it is the only unique part of, the only unique characteristic that language is built on that distinguishes us from other species is recursion. So how does this work in language and why do they think it's important? Well, think of a sentence like the boy was fishing. That's one sentence, but if, what if I take whatever rule made that sentence and apply it to itself? Then I can say the boy who was fishing owned the dog. So I have a sentence inside a sentence. Or the dog, the boy who was fishing, owned, bit the farmer. Or the farmer, the dog, the boy who was fishing, owned, bit, got the gun. At some point, I lose track of one of my favorite examples is oysters, oysters, eat, eat oysters. So that, that's actually a grammatical sentence, but I, it's really hard to understand. I'll let you think about it. <clears throat> Recursion is supposed to be very important. So you get it in words. Truck driver. It's a truck inside drive, and you get this other word, truck driver. It was a kick the bucket moment, whatever that means. But kick the bucket is a series of words used inside another word. And this is recursion. Human languages, what's the longest sentence in English? Who knows? The idea is that it might be infinite. And the only way we can do that with brains the size of grapefruits is to have some device that allows us to produce sentences that get that big without actually having to memorize the sentences. So that's supposed to be the re role of recursion. So they claim this was unique to humans. This is the, they don't like it when I characterize it this way, but I think it's right, so I'll just say it anyway. The, the essence of human language, recursion. <clears throat> now, it turns out that Peter Ha doesn't have that. And I don't think it's the only language like that, but how would you say, I want the hammock that Bill sold? Okay, that's recursion. That's the sentence inside another sentence. How would you say that in Peter Ha? You would say, I want the sentence. I, I want the sentence. You could say that too, perhaps. I want the hammock. Bill sold the hammock. And then I interpret that together in various ways. And one of the ways is... I want the hammock Bill sold. <clears throat> the reason this is important is because if the Pitaha don't have recursion, my explanation is, first of all, it's important if they don't have recursion, whatever the explanation is, because if you claim that it's the essence of human language and you don't find it in a human language, that's a problem. Now, some people have said, <laughs> well, uh, this just like finding, a, in fact, Chomsky said this about me recently in a, in a newspaper interview. He says, well, let's say that Peter Ha is just the way Dan, dis well, he didn't say Dan, actually, he says something else, but um, he's, this uh, person uh, describes it, and that um, th this is more or less equivalent to the idea of finding a group of people that just crawls when they could walk. What does that have to tell us about human biology? Nothing. Okay. Well, that's a difficult position to hold because if the language could be, as I said it was, and he admits that it could be, then it's possible for that language not to be like it was predicted to be. And it's also possible for a third of the languages in the world not to be that way. Ultimately, it's possible that no language has it. And if no language has it, then no language can support or refute the idea. So uh, to s some philosophers, if an idea can't be supported or refuted, it's not a particularly useful idea. So maybe it's wrong. And if that, if that idea is wrong, then it means that language is different than it was proposed by these three eminent researchers. And if it is different, what might it be? It might simply be the result of a number of kinds of constraints on how it is we talk to each other controlled by cultural values. And if cultural values can, can uh, affect language, then this means that language probably is not the innate instinct that, say, Steven Pinker and others say that it is.